Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Jyoti Labs Q4 FY23 conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, a, a wonderful good afternoon, good evening to you. I trust you are having a great day. Uh, representing ISEC, uh, it's our absolute pleasure to host the result conference call, as usual, of uh, Jyoti Labs Limited. The company is represented today by Ms. M.R. Jyoti, Managing Director, and Mr. Sanjay, CFO. Uh, over to the management for the opening remarks, and after that, uh, we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj, and very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, welcome to the conference call of Jyoti Labs. Uh, we'll be discussing the performance of the company for the March quarter, as well as for the full year ended March 31st, 2023, uh, with all of you, and we'll follow it up with question and answer session. So a very quick snapshot of the results. Uh, all of you must have seen our results by now. Uh, so we have delivered a top-line growth of 12.8% for the March quarter and 13.2% for the full year FI23. Uh, this is a consistent double-digit growth now for over 10 quarters, as well as a double-digit growth for the full year on a two-year as well as on a three-year CAGR basis. So a very healthy performance across all categories and channels for us. So we continue to build for the scale in the business, uh, which will give us uh, you know, additional economies of scale. Uh, on the margin side, uh, in spite of uh, the entire industry facing high input inflation, uh, we have been able to grow our EBITDA by 57% for the quarter and 26% for the full year. Our EBITDA margin for the quarter uh, stood at 14.8% versus 10.5% in the previous quarter same time. So a good recovery on the margins perspective. Uh, on the business side, uh, we are on much stronger footing than ever. Uh, our direct reach now is at has crossed 1.1 million outlets and growing further. Uh, we have strengthened our distribution with the aid of technology by implementing Botry, which is the most advanced distributor management system, which will further enhance our sales efficiency. Uh, so overall, the focus is on execution to build scale, and uh, we've been consistently gaining market share across brands. Uh, we have now nine celebrities endorsing our brands. Hence, we are committed for a higher allocation of our resources towards brand building initiatives. Uh, we've also been investing in scaling our manufacturing capacities. Uh, recently, we've added a detergent powder line at our existing Pitampur plant in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, on new launches in this year, which is April 23, we've also launched three new variants of Margot Neem Naturals uh, with the three variants of Lime, Jasmine uh, and Rose. Uh, we believe that this will significantly uh, enhance our Margot franchise and also increase our personal care share in the overall portfolio. So we are excited with uh, these new launches. Um, on the urban rural, both continue to do well. Uh, rural, yes, uh, there, due to inflation, uh, it had lagged a bit uh, of the urban growth. Uh, but we believe that uh, ma rural markets are expanding more quickly than urban markets and uh, we will continue to focus on the rural growth uh, to build a long-term sustainable advantage for Jyoti Labs. Uh, with a healthy PNL growth, uh, our balance sheet too has been stronger than ever. Uh, with the company being debt-free, I the, the gross debt is nil and uh, we have a cash balance of 283 crores as of 31st of March 23, and a working capital days at 13 days. So that's a quick snapshot on the PNL and the balance sheet. So if we look at from the future perspective and outlook on that, we are optimist with our growth plans and uh, working towards you know building a more agile, resilient, and market-focused organization. And with that, for FI 23-24, 
uh, we'll focus towards the double digit growth uh, on the top line which will further strengthen our business franchise in terms of the categories uh, fabric care is doing well with 20.1% growth this quarter and a full year growth of 29% uh, the growth is supported by you know strong value proposition which we have in a detergent brand uh, with a very very strong drive of a relentless focus on distribution uh, we forded as you all know in liquid detergents both in ujala idd and henko uh, which have shown a very much much better growth uh, also our mid price detergent brands more light and mr white have also witnessed good demand uh, in the post wash category uh, we are focusing on building usership to drive category growth uh, that's more for the ujala fabric whitener on dishwash category both are xo and prel continue to do well uh, with steady growth across all skus especially the lups of 5 rupee 10 rupee in the bar category uh, and this again is due to a unique offerings and the distribution drives we have taken uh, both xo and prel uh, they have established themselves as a clear brand of choice among consumers uh, there is an increased level of engagement we have with consumers especially focused on the digital medium for this category uh, if we see for exo it has reached an highest ever market share of 13.8% uh, for the calendar year 22 so uh, uh, very good growth for us in hi segment uh, the extreme weather conditions did impacted the sales for the year uh, we had seen the first three quarters uh not so not been so great uh this quarter the growth has been the quarter has a flat growth so much better than the previous quarters uh we are hopeful that the next year turns out to be better uh and we we'll continue to focus on our liquid vaporizer and uh, promoting coil as a safer alternative to the illegal incense sticks with the consumer uh finally our personal care segment which is primarily margo franchise uh with its natural benefits proposition uh, has delivered a good growth and to aid the growth we also have a new brand ambassador rashi khanna uh, and in this year april 23 we have also introduced three variants uh, in margo neem natural soap uh, in lemon jasmine and uh, rose so with that uh, uh, to summarize we'll continue to focus on the volume led top line growth uh, and given the strength of our brand distribution strategy and uh, further strengthening our direct reach rural footprint and using technology for enhancing our sales efficiency um, and allocating higher resources for brand building and manufacturing capacities so we are very optimistic uh, that and entering this fi 23 24 uh, we want to accelerate uh, the growth and the key mantra is going to be uh, which has uh been a key focus is on execution execution and build a higher scale for our business uh which we have demonstrated in this last year financial performance also so with this uh, we i finish my opening remarks uh, i'm happy to answer any questions or clarifications uh, all of you may have thank you very much thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Santhil Manikaran from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the Margo franchise. Uh, so, in the opening remarks, uh, you highlighted that uh, you brought in a new brand ambassador and also new variants. So, what would be our uh, medium-term strategy for Margo? yeah so uh, 
our existing Margo original name has been doing well. We have uh, clocked the double digit growth on that. Uh, and uh, uh, we've introduced three new variants, uh, which is called as Margo Neem Naturals. Uh, this is to induce more uh, consumers into the Margo franchise uh, and uh, to obviously grow the Margo, uh, uh, you know, our personal care, uh, uh, you know, contribution to the overall uh, business. Uh, yes, we have taken uh, Rashi Khanna. Uh, it's uh, after long that we have taken uh, one celebrity for Margo, uh, and uh, uh, she is, uh, you know, known in the south and uh, also pouring into the uh, uh, in the north and which is the Hindi world, uh, and um, a young star uh, appealing to a younger generation uh, with uh, Margo Neem Naturals. So. Uh, uh, obviously, our aim is high to grow uh, on Margo uh, in double digits in the coming future. Okay. Uh, second is on the laundry business that uh, uh, we have recently merged with uh, uh, the uh, core business. So, what would be the again now uh, the medium term strategy for the laundry business? Yes, sir. So. Uh, uh, the business is now tracking gold 50 odd crores every year and uh, for the last few quarters it's been running on a break even and uh, this year we'll take it as a more as a year of consolidation on the top line and uh, uh, build the business with profitability. So that is where uh, our focus will be this year on the laundry business. Okay. Uh, just a last question. Uh, since uh, you know, the press release also mentioned that you have uh, now move to net cash level and uh, so from the capital allocation point of view if you can just uh, give some highlights how the company will uh, go about over the next three to four years. You said so obviously uh, the business needs cash and uh, we'll be conserving some cash for future growth initiatives and uh, obviously dividend would be one uh, uh, way how we share the, the I mean the profitability profits with the shareholders and uh, the balance you know will depend on how what opportunities we get in the future on the inorganic side uh, yeah I mean uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity and uh, all the best to the team and the team thank you thank you, thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jogani from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Am I audible now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, sir, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is with regards to the tax rate for the quarter. The tax rate for the quarter is higher at around 27%. So one, uh, if you can help us out why this has been higher this quarter and how should we build the tax rate going ahead? Yeah, so uh, if you look at it on an annualized basis, it was going to be around 20% for this year also. And for the future, for the next few years also, you can consider 20%. Uh, this quarter, because you know there have been some asset sales, so therefore the tax rate per se has been higher. But for the full year, it is at around 20%, and we, we expect it to be in a similar range in the next few years as well. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, uh, so the next question is with regards uh, to the margin. Uh, you know, we have seen good uh, sharp uh, margin expansion, uh, especially on the cross side uh, this quarter. Uh, so given uh, where the uh, RMs are right now, and if they sustain at the current levels. Uh, how should we expect the gross margins to move ahead? So, uh, tough one, uh, because a little difficult to target, uh, because these commodity prices are still very volatile. Uh, so, as we speak, uh, uh, we believe that the uh, exit GM or the exit EBITDA uh, for the quarter, so the exit EBITDA for the quarter is 14.8%. I think we'll keep that as a benchmark for now. And uh, we will see how uh, uh, things evolve from here on. Uh, sure. Uh, sir, and my uh, last question, you know, is with regards to, uh, to the uh, 
uh, if we specifically consider uh, the pricing action taken by the market leader in detergent space, uh, so do you see any increased competitive activity here? Uh, and also, if you can help us out with the uh, the volume and the pricing growth for the quarter. Yeah, sir. So this quarter, uh, the top line growth is twelve point eight. Uh, volume is 3.3 and the balance uh, 9.6 is value. Uh, sure. Uh, so then, if uh, if you can help out also with the competitive intensity uh, because of the price cuts taken by the leader in the detergent space, uh, is this expected to have any material impact on the growth rates going ahead? Well, uh, see, uh, competition is always good. Uh, we are growing very well in the detergents category. Uh, any not anything significant is what we have seen. Uh, but we'll we'll follow uh, how the market behaves and you know uh, what the consumer wants. Uh, accordingly, we will also take our pricing actions. Sure. Uh, so just last thing, uh, have you also taken up any price cuts uh, in the detergent segments? Uh, nothing material, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. That's all for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harit Kapoor from Invest Tech. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. So, uh, just a, uh, a couple of questions. Firstly, you know, was on the uh, you know target for double digit growth for FY24. So, uh, you know, we, we are now see we are now in a phase where kind of pricing is still uh, is, is is coming off. As you mentioned, you know, you're now in single digit in terms of uh, price growth. Uh, and uh, uh, it's only likely going to keep fading going forward. Uh, in that uh, uh, construct, we will, one will require kind of volume growth to come back to maybe mid to high single digits to you know hit your target number. So just wanted to get a sense of you know how confident you are that over the next few quarters you can kind of you know drive that. Given that last three quarters has still been in the you know two to three percent range. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh... Uh, you know, going forward, we are looking at a double-digit growth, and uh, for us, it will ca uh, it will uh, mainly come from also from distribution. We are uh, also going to increase uh, our focus on increasing the number of outlets, uh, and also drive the volume growth. Uh, so it will be an action uh, from both from a distribution and uh, uh, volume-led uh, growth. Uh, pricing will be, uh, you know, it depends. Uh, as of now, uh, no more price increases uh, that we see. So majority will be from volume and distribution growth. Right, right, right. And and on the distribution side, uh, you know, we are at currently 1.1 million on the direct. Uh, or any targets that you can share with you on the next one or two years or next year or next two years where you are looking to you know, kind of get this direct uh, number up to, and uh, 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 within that also, you know, which which geographies are we kind of looking at? Uh, uh, you know, is there a greater non-south focus or uh, just some so just some color on these uh, on these on these factors? Yeah, so uh, those are internal targets, so that uh, we would uh, you know uh, wouldn't want to you know say that out. But yes, we are looking at. Uh, the similar kind of growth which we have taken in the last, uh, you know, three four years uh, will be on that uh, growth path, increasing number of outlets. Uh, while uh, for us, uh, you know, uh, it's a pan India thing. Uh, the distribution growth will come from all the uh, um, the entire country. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, any specific focus in any zone or area. It will be an all throughout uh, pan India growth. Got it. And just one last question on distribution was that, uh, you know, is, is this more direct reach led only, expansion led only, or will it also be a mix of both direct and indirect uh, going into the next? Uh, see, see our, our, uh, our primary focus is on going direct. Okay. 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 Yeah. Got it. Got it. Uh, and the second thing was on, on, on the, uh, on the innovation side. So, you know, we've seen uh, after a while, you know, some uh, new things happening, especially on the Margo side. I just wanted to know now that you have some more, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, money, given that gross margins have, have uh, uh, you know, has seen an uplift of almost 46%. Do we, do we see, uh, you know, a continued step up on the ANP side? And if yes, uh, you know, which, uh, you know, potential areas can we see, you know, new things happening, uh, uh, if at all that's the plan? 
Yeah, uh, there will be brand spends. We believe in brand investment. And, uh, uh, you know, last year we had introduced two liquid detergents uh, uh, since we see a trend uh, from consumers shifting from powders to liquid. And we have, uh, you know, the last two launches have been received well in the market. Uh, and it's and it continues to do so and uh, now the latest is uh, margo so we will be spending uh, on uh, and we believe in uh, innovations where we can uh, definitely spend and make that bigger uh, hence uh, you will see uh, innovations which are uh, you know uh, relevant innovations in that sense so uh, then going and uh, doing you know many at once and not able to do uh, justice we believe in uh, launching something and then backing it enough uh, by brand spend got it got it got it and and one last uh, uh, data point question was you know the within laundry uh, how large now is uh, in, as you can give a percentage also in terms of the overall uh, home care segment how large would the mid size brands like mr white and mod light be as a percentage of uh, of the home care business uh, of the fabric care business with versus what it was maybe 2 3 years back so are you asking for us or are you asking for the care industry for for you guys so mr white and mod light how large would mr white and mod light be now sanjay versus maybe 3 years back for pre covid or or, or or whatever uh, kind of end to end data point you can share in terms of percentage or whatever so are it uh, they were pretty small uh, if you are asking 3 4 yes. years back and yes. today uh, both the brands are under crore plus to uh, the 100 crore uh, uh, together i am seeing each one of them uh, each one under crore plus got it got it got it okay that's it from me i'll come back for, in the queue for more thanks thank you the next question is from the line of aviral jain from singular gulf please go ahead uh, hi sanjay jyoti uh, congratulations on a very good performance my first question was on the dishwash category given the under penetration we, uh, and the growth rate that we had seen till last year it was in uh, mid teens and now it has fallen to less than 10% so is is the category growth itself has slowed down or has there been any uh, price versus value change just wanted to understand are we i from from the disclosures it doesn't look like that uh, we are losing market share so uh, just wanted to understand what's happening um no we are we are in line with the market growth so there is no issues there uh, just a temporary thing here and there but uh, this was has been growing and it will be uh, in the coming year also it will be uh, you know we for we we foresee a double digit growth in the coming year as well and the market shares remain intact there's no issue and how is um, some of the expansion on the um, post war side panning out crisp and shine was um, being launched outside of tamil nadu and kerala yeah and so we had taken it to uh, ap and uh, you know to our surprise it has taken us like uh, uh, more than uh, it's been received well so uh, we are hoping to do good numbers uh, in that market as well so crisp and shine has uh, uh, has clocked the highest ever in the last uh, uh, it has come back to obviously post pandemic and has crossed those numbers as well so doing well and there was one brand extension to west bengal also which which was crisp and shine as well or it was something else no it was a detergent ujala idd okay and how is that come along in terms of results uh that's fair uh, it's just uh, a year there uh, while west bengal is a loyal uh, you know brand loyal market it will take its time but uh, initial response has been good okay and ujala idd is bigger than mr white and more lighter than it uh, it's Sorry? significantly i'm asking about the scale of ujala idd um, yeah. because it's largely kerala centric if i am not wrong yes yes okay. sure yeah, um, it's, it's uh, that is all yeah yeah okay that's it for my side thank you thank you
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Teja Shah from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions from my side. Uh, first on uh, increasing reach as a key uh, growth driver, I just wanted to understand uh, post uh, demonetization. Uh, we are not seeing that kind of delta for industry, not only for us, but for industry also, uh, coming from increasing reach. So pre-demon, there used to be a very uh, big thumb rule that 10% growth in uh, reach will actually lead to at least 3% growth in revenue or volume. But we are not seeing that. So just wanted to understand in the recent past, whatever uh, expansion that we would have done, what percentage of growth we can attribute to reach increase. Yeah, so there is one is, uh, so a company of our scale uh, at 2500 crore top line, having a distribution reach of 1.1 uh, odd million is a very decent number. Now, a lot of this uh, investment, what you do in building this distribution is also futuristic. Uh, so it's not fair to say whether it is going to give us 3% or what, because uh, these outlets which we add, do take 18 to 24 months to stabilize and give uh, good results. But yes, uh, the objective is to build that, uh, because building this infrastructure takes time and it's a hard work. And that's what we believe that, especially in the rural area, urban markets are generally being captured by established companies and by us. So uh, what we are doing is these are future investments and uh, which is what we are doing both on the technology side of it and on the uh, footprint, increasing the footprint. So yes, it will add to our distribution as Jyoti said uh, in the earlier point uh, that the future growth in spite of all the challenges uh, we will aim for a double digit which will come in from uh, initiatives like these of adding uh, direct outlets. Sure. No, I was just trying to understand uh, has, has this growth driver lost relevance in the last decade in terms of uh, how it used to uh, result in immediate growth uh, 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 uptick. We are not seeing for the industry itself. So when we actually kind of again next three years or two years we go on that path, uh, based on the recent evidences that you would have seen in your numbers, uh, does it kind of revive growth aggressively? I, I, can, I understand that there is a uh, there is a gestation period of this growth R, but let's say what you would have done four years back, uh, has it turned out to be a very good good growth source of growth in the last two or two years, or it has kind of uh, uh, it, it has kind of uh, it is still not showing numbers because of the volatility we are, we are seeing in the macro environment. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, two years is a fair time, and the reason why we get that confidence of adding more bad power and you know, focusing on adding that distribution is because we are seeing the return on the investment. Uh, what we are doing in building this infrastructure for the first 12 to 18 months do give us very good results in next, uh, whatever, next year onwards. So, so uh, yes, uh, two years is a fair time and we are seeing good results and henceforth uh, we are using distribution as a strong lever for us uh, to accelerate our growth. Sure, uh, very clear. Uh, second question is, what percentage of our current turnover comes from modern trade? Uh, the, uh, both modern trade and e-commerce put together is around 10%. Okay, and uh, and what would be our concentration in top three chains in the country uh, on modern trade side? The concentration of top three chains? Yeah. Top three or five. I just want to uh, understand the exposure. Uh, uh, what we have to top two, three chains in the country in modern trade. Sir, difficult for me to put a number. Uh, but I mean, the first top three chains obviously to a larger share for us. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so the 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 uh, follow up question to this was that we are seeing a very uh, revived aggression and then. Uh, enthusiasm from all this modern chains, uh, modern uh, trade chains in terms of launching their private labels across now. And, uh, and uh, they always used to keep cards close to their chest, but now there seems to be a lot of aggression across categories. So just wanted to know, have you seen uh, increased fight for shelf space versus uh, other brands was always there, but now uh, you have to fight for uh, shelf space with the private labels in some of these chains or, or 
you are still not seeing that pressure point building up at least in the, in the current uh, uh, observation that you would have uh, picked up so that in the past also we have seen it in the last year also we have seen it and if the results are there with you uh, yes these will all be uh, developments in the market and uh, we are ready for it and uh, we we believe we'll be able to have a uh, our growth uh, irrespective of these uh, challenges which will keep coming up so so you are not sensing any increased intensity on private label side uh, versus past 2 3 years but definitely it is there uh, i'm not saying it is not there but then all business is uh, <laughs> these challenges or opportunities uh, so we are ready for that and you know we don't see much of an issue for us perfect uh, that's all from my side and thanks a lot best thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of karan bhuvania from icici securities please go ahead yeah hi good afternoon sir sir if you could help us uh, with some color on how your growth has been in terms of rural versus urban and are you seeing any recovery uh, from the rural markets uh, in terms of volumes uh, so karan uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, you know rural is a is a long term growth uh, strategy for us uh, and uh, we sell around 40% of our portfolio in rural market Uh, uh there is a gradual improvement in the growth uh, with the rural market and uh, uh, we believe the the initial challenges or the slow down what we have seen they are bottoming out and um, uh, we see good growth both in urban and rural for us okay. also sir if you could talk about uh, the liquid portfolio for this part segment and your laundry segment how are they performing and if you could quantify uh or what what are the what is the revenue contribution to liquid liquids portfolio right karan i am not clear with the question what you said uh, the share of liquids in a detergent portfolio detergent and both dishwash also uh, as for secondary dishwashing segment yeah so we don't give a specific number of a liquids portfolio in the detergents or dishwash uh, but uh, for detergents definitely it is quite small uh, as of now because both the liquids ujala and uh, and uh, tanko uh, uh, liquids were launched just 12 months to 18 months back uh, so they still have to gain size and yeah that's it thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of rabinder singh sikan from gss please go ahead sir uh good evening uh my questions are three one considering that you have just as you just mentioned that you have just launched uh liquid detergents is there any move to launch uh, uh detergents in pods which is quite common outside india and is actually being sold by quite a few online retailers in india um is there any move to move to pods uh nothing right now sir nothing right now okay consider uh, the second question is uh a space that has not been addressed but with the advent of uh dishwashers the popularity of dishwashers in india um considering that there is only one actually one uh, dishwash uh liquid and uh uh a uh, tablet available in india is there any move for you to move into this space any um i mean uh, there's no indian company that i know is uh, manufacturing that any have you considered moving into this space uh sir right now the dishwasher uh, penetration in the country is way way minuscule and uh, we will do that at the right time so there's no move right now to I think we right now when venture we to need, that uh, uh, you know we need a particular size and uh, this thing to actually get good uh, uh, this thing to launch it uh, our focus is right now to grow the existing uh, liquids uh, and the bar markets mm-hmm. okay thank you i think that's all i had to ask thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of Kush Gosrani from Incred Asset Management please go ahead 
Yeah, hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, a, I wanted to ask, since we have, you know, we have been gaining market share across our key product categories over the last three years, uh, is the trends sustainable going ahead as well, or is the competition increasing for us? So definitely, we will be increasing our market share. Uh, we, we, we aim to grow uh, or accelerate our growth. And which would mean in most of the categories, we should be doing better than the industry growth. Uh, so we are hopeful and uh, all the efforts, all the, all the action points which we spoke uh, uh, will help us in uh, gaining market share. Uh, we have done it in the past. I think it was, gives us enough confidence to uh, uh, build those market shares uh, for each of our brands uh, better in the next few years as well. Yes, sir. And in terms of distribution reach, what is our strategy over there? We used to be, uh, we are right now at 1.1 million direct reach, which used to be 86 million. So how should we think of the direct reach distribution going ahead uh, and overall distribution strategy for us as well? Yeah, so I think the previous question Jyoti mentioned that yes, there are internal targets for us to drive our distribution uh, to higher numbers. Uh, uh, but as we speak also, the number is good enough for, uh, you know, 2,500 crore top line what we have. Uh, so we will deliver, uh, we will uh, take all efforts to build uh, uh, an efficient distribution or increase the distribution from 1.1 to, uh, to a higher number in the years to come. Uh, and uh, it will be pan-India basis uh, and uh, we'll continuously gain or get benefits out of that distribution. Sure, sir. Thank you. I'll get back in. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nesar Parikh from Native Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh... Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is, you know, can you give us a split of uh, how much is, for the year, how much have we done from North, West, uh, and South, and Kerala, if you can give some indication. No, I didn't and get a question on which brand are you asking or on a pan-India basis? No, on a, a pan-India basis. And also, you know, the our strategy of growing in North and West further, how is that going? It's on a pan India basis, if you can give that number. Uh, so, uh, South is 40% of our business, and non South is 60%. And uh, the, there are brands which we are focusing. It depends on each brand to brand, and it's a much larger question. Uh, it depends on each brand to brand. What are the geographical expansion and the focus markets we have taken? Uh, and uh, it depends on the opportunity, what we are seeing, the competition. And uh, so, uh, but, uh, you know, South remains a good market for us. There are some brands uh, like Maxo where we are much stronger in North and East. So it depends on each brand to brand. And, uh, but we have brands across India and the distribution is also equally uh, uh, distributed across India. Sorry, uh, you know, if I can, I, I think North and West, till what I last understood was around, 25-30% for you, which is obviously, uh, you know, much lower versus uh, most of the competition. So in that context, you know, what was the contribution of North and West to business and what steps both from distribution and branding are we taking to increase that share, you know, at least at par with what industry is? Yes, sir. So uh, we don't give any numbers for each zone and states and uh, area every quarter. Uh, but having said that, yes, both North and West uh, offers us very good opportunity and we are working towards it to uh, have uh, better growth in these markets as well alongside uh, All India Penetration, what we have. Got it. Uh, and uh, the second question was on the modern trade channel. Uh, uh, you know, what would be uh, the share of modern trade for us now and, uh, you know, any any further progress over there uh, in terms of penetration or share reach or something? 
Yes, sir. So, Modern Trade and e-commerce put together is broadly 10% of our total business. And we are doing good, uh, both Modern Trade and e-commerce specifically. Uh, there are very good plans for us. And uh, both the categories, are, both the channels are doing well. Okay. Okay, fine. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Amit Purohit from Ilara. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. <clears throat> Just on the distribution side, uh, I wanted to understand, uh, uh, you said the technology investment and uh, more fleet on, on the street. So uh, we have some thousand plus sales team. Uh, has that increased or uh, what is the... Um, outlook on that um, I just wanted to know the current number and uh, second also on the rural initiative uh, how do you define rural for you and uh, what is the uh, number of villages count reached now versus earlier say and what's any plan if you could share there? yeah so Amit uh, to your first question uh, uh, Yeah, so on the manpower, uh, yes, uh, it's a natural, it's a norm. It's every year, uh, there will be addition of the sales team, and which will be in line with the uh, geographical expansion which we are taking and the increase in distribution what we are doing. Uh, we don't give a breakup of each uh, zone and the number of people we are adding every, every, every quarter or every year. Uh, but as we said, uh, the overall growth uh, will be led by will will all will also have the element of uh, adding manpower and increasing our distribution. Sorry, if you could yeah. just repeat the second question, I I just forgot. So I mean, I, I know technology. What what do you mean by uh, technology initiatives? Uh, investing behind technology in the distribution. Yeah, so I see one of the important things uh, was to uh, further enhance our sales distribution and, you know, the channel partners, uh, there is a advanced uh, DMS system called Botry, uh, which is what we have implemented. And uh, we, we, we believe that, you know, that will make uh, the, uh, the schemes management uh, much simpler for our sales team and for the channel partners. And uh, henceforth, we have invested in it and we have been able to uh, we have been able to uh, uh, do that, which will give us benefits over a long period of time. And on the last question, uh, we reach 100% of the uh, villages, about 10,000 population. Okay, and any uh, outlook or maybe uh, what was that probably uh, three, four years back? Is that increased or, or is, it will increase now? So, uh, Reaching 100% up to 10,000 population again. It's a it's a initiative which we had taken a few years back, and uh, it will keep improving. You know because there is a cost to go much deeper into it. And as we scale our business, yes, we will go to you know further down. Uh, but as we speak, I think we believe uh, if we can sell more lines to these outlets which we are currently servicing, that itself will give us uh, decent growth uh, for many years. So we'd rather increase the efficiency of the current distribution and uh, keep adding more outlets uh, for future growth. So I mean, uh, so broadly, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, but what would be the share of rural in our sales now? So currently it's around 40%. Okay, and uh, it is safe to assume that uh, the direct reach uh, initiative would be uh, both largely uh, more towards the urban side or it will be uh, well balanced? It will be both urban and rural. Okay, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dheeraj Mystery from Antique. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question is regarding a &P spend. Now that we have started witnessing softening of some of the raw material prices and uh, hence improvement in gross margin, what would be the uh, a &P spend as a percentage of sales going ahead? So, right now it's around 7, 7.5%. Um, for now, it will be uh, in the similar range. 
and we will see how uh, you know uh, how how much benefit we are going to see in the gm uh, going forward and accordingly we'll take a call on that okay okay and uh, some couple of bookkeeping questions that uh, in this year we have seen that depreciation exp uh, expense going down and uh, can i know the reason for that so depreciation i think in the consolidated business uh, consolidated revenue uh, sorry, depreciation charge remains the same across the years okay and uh, what would the effective tax rate for fi 24 and 25 it should be in the range of around 20% Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kosto Pawaskar from Sher Khan by B N P Parivas. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. First, uh, can you uh, give us the volume growth excluding uh, the H I business for this quarter? So we don't give each uh, x x whatever other businesses, but uh, overall, as I said, it's uh, for the quarter is 3.3 percent uh, volume growth, and for the full year, it's 3 uh, uh, percent. Okay, and uh, for HI, uh, you said that you expect uh, this year to be uh, better. So, can you just uh, elaborate on saying that what exactly uh, your strategy would be? You know, to regain uh, the growth back in the HI business. so uh, so first you know uh, instead of giving a volume i can still attempt to answer your question on the value side of it so for the full year the business has grown by 13.2% if we exclude the hr business then it would have been 17.8% uh now to answer your question on hrc we have seen challenges which have been more uh, uh, uh seasonal issues uh, which impacted us much more in the core markets in which we are present uh so there is nothing much which we can do other than uh you know hoping that the the coming year the season will be a uh, little better uh second is uh, the illegal incident tax which has impacted the category uh we i think we and as well as the industry is trying to uh educate the consumers on the ill in forward uh, the 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 health hazard which comes uh, with the usage of those illegal incident tax So while we are doing that, we are also trying to, uh, you know, work towards coils to ensure that uh, uh, the consumers use coils and uh, understand the health hazard of the illegal incident. We hope that uh, these measures and continue to focus on our liquid vaporizer as a strategy. So with all, I think all these three things, uh, if they all work well, uh, this quarter we have seen a better uh, numbers than the past uh, three quarters. and uh, that gives us the confidence that yes hopefully we'll have a better uh, year uh, the next year okay 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 thanks thanks thank you the next question is from the line of abhijit sinha from pi square investments please go ahead good evening sir just wanted to understand the what were are the growth drivers that we expecting in the next two years what should be helping us grow our volumes as well as our any price hike so uh, i think we spoke in the so we will be engaging more with the consumers uh, we will be investing more behind the brands expanding a distribution network uh the good thing about our portfolio is it straddles across different categories yeah. and at different various price points so yeah. i think these all things makes us believe that uh we have a portfolio which is again uh, uh of essential goods uh we are seeing a uh, good demand across both urban and rural uh, portfolio as well as in the modern trade e-commerce so these are few things which gives us uh you know confident that yes we should uh, deliver a, a higher growth and uh, win more market share uh, in next you know, year so if you could throw some highlight on the re this quarter's taxation i think it's about 28% which is quite higher significantly compared to our you know 18 to 20% that we were keeping in the previous quarters so was this some one off thing 
the tax yeah yeah no issues so this quarter uh, see this year we had some asset sales on which uh, the tax rate is going to be higher uh, but if you analyze it uh, for the full year the tax rate is at around 20% and uh, we believe in the next uh, next 2 to 3 years also you can assume the tax rate in the range of around 20% perfect so it, we don't go into that whole 25% slab we stick to no, the 20% not, rate still, right? yeah perfect sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you all um, i think it's been a great discussion this afternoon uh, we look forward uh, you know if you have any for the questions please do reach out to us or to isec team uh, thank you once again and have a good evening thank you bye on behalf of icici securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line